Let's moan in the Central Committee. Let's cringe in the Central Committee. Let's bog in the Central Committee right now. New. Let's do new footage. New footage of the Capitol riots. All right. Are you ready? CNN put together this presentation because a lot of uh, right-wingers have been like, ah, it's not that big a deal. They were just there to vacation. Blah, 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 blah. If you look at it, it was like it was a, uh, it was like a tour group, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's check this out. Six months ago, tens of thousands of people converged to Washington, D.C. from all quarters of the country to decry what they erroneously believed to be a stolen election. The raucous protest culminated on January 6th with a deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol, a landmark stain on American democracy. Deluded rally-goers who saw themselves as patriot fighting for their country demanded that Congress declare Donald Trump the rightful winner of the 2020 presidential election. The sense of purpose shared by many who were there to wage war against the shadowy conspiracy of elites intent on destroying America was built on a foundation of fantasy. The violent uprising opened national wounds over race, faith, and ideology that remain fresh and in many ways don't appear to be healing. Signs of hardening viewpoints and deepening divisions abound with a strong majority of Republicans believing the myth of a stolen election. Votes and then get back to us and let's see if Joe Biden's our president. God Almighty is about to dethrone Nancy Pelosi. It's about to happen. Hello, good morning, we're here. But lots of patriots standing for freedom. What happened to the Tea Party? We're still here. We just grew and morphed into something bigger and better, the MAGA movement. Found out Biden won in the middle of the night, like a thief in the night. From D.C. was in the Capitol, out of your message. Out of the Took over the Capitol, overran the Capitol. Fuck you! This is an America that's had enough right here. Super sad that this is America and... We're not going anywhere. The multitudes who assembled in D.C. that week are steered people there to divide in two broad overlapping categories, the manipulators and the manipulating. By per perpetuating the lie and by whipping up the flames of populist resentment in a country whose white Christian majority is fading, the politicians, operatives, fame seekers, and influencers who make up the manipulators had much to gain. Followers, visibility, money, power. On the other hand, the manipulated, hundreds of whom are now facing criminal charges, had much to lose. Jobs, family cohesion, community standing, and freedom. From your lips to God's ears. Select a character to continue. <laughs> All right, chat. Choose your own adventure. Who are we picking? Which character are we picking? This is legendary copium. This is I when I saw this, I knew we had to play along in chat. All right. I, I think one's gonna win. All right, let's start off with one, the oath keeper. Took over the Capitol, overran the Capitol. We're in the fucking Capitol, bro. Self-report. A few minutes after storming the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, a man in combat gear decided to document his role in the historic event with a selfie video. His name was Donovan Crowell. In the video, he and Jessica Watkins, a fellow member of the Oath Keepers paramilitary group, revel in their moment of perceived triumph. <laughs> About a year before that infamous day, Donovan Crowell stood on the side of a country road in Ohio in the middle of the night. The 49-year-old was drunk! <laughs> and slurred his words badly as he told a state trooper a convoluted tale about a core car stuck in a cornfield. Oh, they're doing my man dirty, dude. They're doing my man dirty. They're going, look at this DUI he got. Oof. Oof. Well, dude, whenever you try to, anyone searches your name, the DU, this story is coming up. Oof. The scenario, detailed in a police report, seemed to epitomize what Krause family said his life had become. Long gone was the handsome high school athlete. Oh! Oh! They're shivin' this guy! They're shivin' this guy! Gung-ho Marine and sporty dad who coached his kid's football team. 
Ral had become instead an angry drunk who lived in his mother's basement for a time, railed against Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and embraced the conspiracy theories of Alex Jones. Oh, dude, CNN just roasted this guy. They just, they just ripped him apart. They've done him so fucking dirty. His rants alienated more progressive family members, resulting in a tit-for-tat Facebook blocking, shouting message, shouting matches, and awkward family gatherings. He was adrift. But his crowd downed Bud Lights and whiskey at a dive bar called the Jolly Roger and sometimes slept in an ex-girlfriend's shed after getting kicked out of her house. He seemed to find a purpose in life that had long eluded him. He joined a right-wing paramilitary group called the Oath Keepers, which believes the American way of life is under attack. So, by the way, chat, I know we're laughing at this guy and he's getting done dirty. Oh, did I miss the video? Oh, no worries, Sparrow Robin. We are getting fresh copium. There's going to be more footage. This is, sp this is a sousant. You're just getting a smidgen, a smorg, you know, a little hors d'oeuvre. We're going to be sprinkling the whole thing. Don't worry. You haven't missed anything. So, okay, in all seriousness, this is how fascists in America are, are recruiting. They're going to middle-aged white men who's, who are down on their luck. And guess what? This, is, this makes perfect sense. They're down on their luck because America for the middle of working class is going down, whether you're black, brown, or white. And so the fascists go to the working class and middle class people and say, you can't afford a home. You can't get a good job. It's the Mexicans. It's the minorities. It's the gays. It's the socialists. The same fucking playbook as the Nazis. The identical playbook as the Nazis. And one of... And see, here's the thing. Neo-Nazis and white supremacists know this. That's why they supported Trump. Because even though Trump is not an explicit neo-Nazi, he's training the entire Republican Party to accept literal fascist propaganda and frames of the way society is and the problems. And so Donald Trump may not say, right now, extermination camps, but he's setting the stage after the conservative movement fails to deliver the promised land that they, that they said they would bring, because guess what? Right-wing economic policy and fascist social policy doesn't make a country better. Pro tip. Corporate, being slaves to corporations and the wealthy doesn't make life better for the middle class. Busting unions doesn't make life better for the middle class. So the right-wingers are going to fail. And what are they going to do? They're going to escalate. The other conservatives stabbed us in the back. They didn't really do what needed to be done. We've got to escalate the violence. We've got to escalate our attacks on people of color. That is what they're going to say. That is what they're going to do. And don't you worry, chat. This is why I'm concerned. Trump mused about sending infected Americans to Guantanamo, seeking to keep COVID numbers down. In the early days of the coronavirus pandemic, as White House officials debated whether to bring infected Americans home for care, President Donald Trump suggested his own plan for where to send them, eager to suppress the numbers on U.S. soil. Don't we have an island that we own? The president reportedly asked those assembled in the Situation Room in February 2020 before the U.S. outbreak would explode. What about Guantanamo? We import goods, Trump specified, lecturing his staff, we're not going to import a virus. Now, if you don't know this, chat, Guantanamo is in Cuba. Guantanamo Bay is in Cuba. Donald Trump did not know that. We forced the Cubans to give us Guantanamo Bay, not Guantanamo Island, you fucking idiot, when we defeated the Spanish in the Spanish-American War of 1898. And instead of... We said we went to that war to help Cuba push back their oppressors. But before we would let Cuba get independence, we forced them to accept a whole bunch of stuff, including giving us territory for military bases and allowing us to control their foreign policy and allowing us to intervene in their domestic affairs when we saw fit. The Platt Amendment, chat. 
That's what it was. The Platt Amendment in March 2nd, 1901, stipulated seven conditions for the withdrawal of United States troops remaining in Cuba at the end of the Spanish-American War, and an eighth condition that Cuba signed a treaty accepting these seven conditions. It defined the terms of Cuban-U.S. relations essentially to be an unequal one of U.S. dominance over Cuba. In June 12th, 1901, Cuba amended its constitution to contain word-for-word the seven applicable demands of the Platt Amendment. Two of the seven pledges were to allow the United States to intervene unilaterally in Cuban affairs and a pledge to lease land to the United States for naval bases on the island. So do you understand why Cuba revolutionaries did not like the United States? How we forced them to accept unilateral intervention in their domestic affairs, and people pretend like Cuba is the bad guy. Imagine if China forced America to amend our constitution to allow them to intervene in our domestic affairs. It's like incomprehensible. Did you learn that in school? Anyway, we're getting a field. President Donald Trump, excuse me, War is on the horizon, Crowell allegedly texted a fellow Oath Keeper in November. Then came the call to action he'd been waiting for. President Donald J. Trump, a fellow Oath Keeper, told Crowell he wanted all able-bodied patriots in the Capitol on January 6th. Crowell had no intention of letting the commander-in-chief down. I was hanging with some of the wrong people. The things I did, I was hanging out with some of the wrong people, it seems like, but I didn't really do anything, so I feel pretty good that my case is going to come out and show that. So, Any chance you can just come out? We're doing an extensive story about no, um, I'm good. what Thank happened. You, very much, though. you have a good day, sir. Do you, do, you, do you feel like you were manipulated into going to the Capitol? No. No, I really got nothing to say to you. I, I don't watch your garbage anyway. Um, okay. Today's crowd is under house arrest awaiting trial in connection to the Capitol riot and living with his adult son in rural Ohio. CNN's Drew Griffin knocked on his door. I don't watch your garbage anyway. <laughs> Maybe you should consider starting, dude. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Fail dad. Pepe la. Is anybody surprised? Fascism and right-wing politics is fail son central. Have you seen Charlie Kirk? Anyway, let's get back to this. Although Crowell opted not to participate in the telling of his story, interviews with his sister, Denisa Crowell, mother, Joanne Rowe, and his friends paint a portrait of a good man who fell on hard times and grew embittered. Oh, CNN did him so dirty, dude. CNN did him so dirty. They went to his mom. They went to his, his sister. Oh, dude, you got got. Crow's story is an illustration of his ex an era of extreme polarization. The sharp political divisions of his personal life typify the kind of rancor that has torn through families across the country. Similarly, Crow's court case offers a lens into Americans' competing visions of reality about what happened on the Capitol on January 6th. Is Donovan Crow a dangerous terrorist who helped plan an insurrection and then on that day abetted a violent attempt to halt electoral proceedings and disrupt the transfer of power? As federal prosecutors allege, absolutely, this is a fact. I mean, is there any question? If Donovan Crowell, while in the Capitol, could have killed Nancy Pelosi and kept Donald Trump in for four more years, he would have. There's no doubt in my mind that if those Capitol riots could keep Donald Trump in office for four more years, no matter what the Electoral College said, no matter what the vote said, they would have. That's an attempted coup. Because they physically were there. They didn't just think it sitting in their apartment, basement apartments of their mom's house. They did it. They stormed the Capitol. They beat police. They smeared shit on the walls. They went through every, they ransacked uh, congressional offices. Or is he a patriot who, according to his attorney, committed no vandalism or violence in the Howard building, but in fact acted peacefully and is guilty of little more than misdemeanor trespassing? How a beloved dad and coach fell into conspiracy oh theories. Oh my god, they got his high school photos! They got his high school photos, dude! <laughs> Growing up poor in Bushnell, Illinois, life at home could be turbulent. There, a crowd who played high school football protected his two younger siblings and mother from a physically abusive father 
who would die of alcoholism at 46. Even so, Crowell followed his father's footsteps and joined the Marines at 17. He thrived in that setting as a mechanic, his sister said. But his military career was cut short in 1993 when he fell out of a grounded helicopter and injured his knee. Crowell later held a succession of factory jobs and over the course of a couple decades was twice married and divorced. Those unions produced two children. Is this guy out of... He's a divorced dad. He took an injury to the knee. This is... This is Ohio in a nutshell. If you want to know why Ohio went far right, this is it. This guy lived the exact life. He went from working probably decent factory jobs, which even if they weren't union, there were union factory jobs around, which meant the, the wages and benefits were much higher than they would have otherwise been. And his dad was an abusive, drunk Marine who died at 40. This guy, like... This is the most stereotypical fascist I've ever seen. Crowell also enjoyed a few beers, his mother and sister said, but his drinking began to emerge as a problem when he returned home from the military and steadily grew worse over the years. He was just very, very good with them. Of course, he let him do crazy things. <laughs> oh my God, Ohio. This is in my mind. This is Ohio. This is Ohio in my mind. This is so sad. But this is Ohio. After his first divorce in 1995, Crowell lived for a time in small town Ohio with his sister, Denisa, who, like their recently retired mother, mother is a registered nurse. Denisa says her kids adored Crowell. He was very good with them, but of course, he let them do crazy things. The parents of the kids that he coached, they all admired him because they knew he was fair. Crowell married again and moved into a home in Woodstock, Ohio, population 300. Crowell's second marriage deteriorated. He and his wife lost their home to foreclosure in 2010 and ultimately divorced. Thanks, Obama! You can literally see neoliberalism creating fascism in this guy's personal story. You can literally see neoliberalism creating fascism in this story. Everything we've ever argued has been proved correct as we read this story. Holy shit. Actual case study. He started drinking heavily and using drugs, his sister said. In 2015, Crow, 45, moved into the basement of his mo home his mother shared with her husband in Peoria, Illinois. It didn't go well. They squ squabbled over politics and media. She said he blasted Alec Jones on his phone when she was trying to watch MSNBC. I couldn't watch Rachel Maddow. She's my favorite. I have to say something. Oh my god. We, our entire worldview is completely validated. Of course she watches MSNBC. She's a registered nurse. She's doing fine. She's a lib. And of course there's no alternative. I mean, again, it's 2015, chat. There's literally no alternative. This is as left as it gets in media. Other than the people that are hunting down democracy now online in 2015 or TYT, this is as left as it gets. Cal's drinking worsened and he said disparaging things about black people and then President Barack Obama using racist epithets, his sister and si his mother and sister claim. Denisa said this was all the more per perplexing because Crow had a black uncle with whom he was close. They were all pallbearers at his funeral, she said of Crow and his younger brother, Joey. They loved him. Still, neither believes Crow's political anger was primarily driven by racism, uh, as so much as a contempt for liberals and a fealty to Trump. You know what? You know what? I believe them. I believe them. I mean, his life was destroyed by neoliberalism. His life was literally destroyed by neoliberalism. And racism was used by the right. Now, I'm not saying this guy is good. I'm not saying this guy is redeemable. He's not. He's an enemy. He's a fascist. But you could see how the fascists came. Like, this is literally everything we on the left have been saying about our society and the danger of the alt-right is because is this guy. This guy. He gave them someone to blame for their lot in life. Well, it couldn't be that... You're an alcoholic, drug addict, and, you know, that's why you can't keep a job. 
Um, it can't be that you continue to stay in a place where there are no jobs. It can't be that you refuse to get an education, that they're offering you retraining or whatever. I think that that is what Trump gave these people, including my brother. Okay. Let me just say this. This is liberalism right here. This is why liberalism loses. Do, do, do any of you suddenly believe that Ohio went from one of the industrial centers of the world to spontaneously everybody just decided to become an opioid addict and an alcoholic? Just spontaneously, they all decided one day there was a really bad generation that was just born and then all the Ohio hard workers died out and it was just a new generation of drug addicts and alcoholics. That's why Ohio is a shithole now. Because all the hard workers just went away and everybody spontaneously decided to be a drug addict and an alcoholic. That's what happened. It's his personal fault. Now, here's the thing. I want to say this. It doesn't mean that nobody has done this. A lot of people did. That's why the populations of Pennsylvania and Ohio went down. The people with the means, the people with the opportunity left. A lot of people left Ohio. A lot of people left Detroit. A lot of people left Pennsylvania. When the jobs left, they left. You're right. But some people couldn't afford it. And guess what? There aren't great American jobs in Texas for these kind of guys. They'd be just as poor and just as opioid addicted and just as drunk in Texas. So you want to blame this guy? It's not... No. We can't educate ourselves out of a structural problem, folks. That's just not realistic. And if liberals keep coming out with responses like this, we're fucked. Fascism will win. He wanted me to have a map with a back route to his house. I needed to start um, collecting water and cash. Um, don't keep my money in the bank and um, cash and all this stuff so I could drop everything and get to his house at a moment's notice without using main roads. I'm like, why? And he said, well, because you know, and of course, President Obama was still in office, something about FEMA camps. And uh, yeah, I was just like, I told my significant other, I'm like, he's fucking lost his mind. Denise says she'll never forget the day she was struck by the concern that her brother might be going off the deep end. She said sometimes in 2015, Crow called and rambled off a set of instructions that left her baffled. In the fall of 2016, when the presidential campaign was in full throttle, Denise organized a family reunion in Illinois. That week, she noticed Crowell had some survivalist magazines in the bathroom. The prepper journals threw her, but suddenly the bizarre phone call about the maps and the back roads made more sense. Denise raised, razzed Crowell about the literature, which is sometimes known to take an apocalyptic worldview. I'm like, what's this, some light reading material she remembers? He just blew it off. Because he didn't want to listen to me. Crowell eventually started parroting the ludic ludicrous canard that Hillary Clinton ran a sex rink at a pizza parlor, another debunked conspiracy theory known as Pizzagate. Joanne said he went to war with family members on Facebook over politics. He repeated scurrilous falsehoods spread by QAnon, the online movement that believes its followers in Trump are fighting a cabal of Satan-worshipping elites who prey on children, and that the elites will be vanquished in a warlike storm. Oh, one day, what was it, he... He said to us, um, oh, Tom Hanks and his wife were the head of a pedophile ring. I'm like, they are not. He says, yes, they are. Listen, chat, Tom Hanks is not in charge of a pedophile ring, but his son looks like this. Hey, guys, um, look, I just wanted to tap in really quick. I just got this feeling, man. Um, that this summer is, uh, it's about to be a white boy summer, you know, take it how you want. I'm not talking about like Trump, uh, you know, NASCAR type white. I'm talking about, you know, you know, me, um, John B, Jack Harlow type white boy summer. You know what I mean? Let me know if you guys, uh, can vibe with that. And, uh, 
get ready, you know? Because I am. We have enough to blame Tom Hanks for. All right. We've got enough to blame Tom Hanks for. We don't need to go to pedophiles. We don't need to go to other shit. He, he created that, okay? He created that. We've got enough. We've got enough, all right? Eventually in 2017, Joanne kicked Crowell out of the house. He went back to Ohio where he would connect with Jessica Watkins, alleged recruiter for the Oath Keepers. In Ohio, Crowell's home life continued to be unstable. He shared a country house with a girlfriend for a while. But the relationship soured. He was relegated to sleeping in the shed. Dude was in the literal doghouse, dude. He was in the literal doghouse, bro. Oh, no, 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 dude. Crow later moved into a house in Woodstock that was a short stroll to the Jolly Roger bar where his life would take a fateful turn. God, dude, there's so many rotten towns like this in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, New York, West Virginia, Kentucky, just that whole area, parts of Virginia, ugh, the entire Midwest is rotting, the only thing that's growing there is fucking mushrooms, holy shit, it's like I look at my hometown, yeah. Julie Harvey, a former bartender at the establishment, which now has a new name and new owner, said Crow is a regular. She said he could easily put away 12 beers and 12 shots of Jameson in the night. Have you heard of the Dram Shop Act? Jesus Christ, lady. You're not supposed to serve someone that much. My God. You don't know what the Dram Shop Act is. Dram Shop gives a cause of action to people who have been injured due to a bar illegally serving alcohol. A Dram Shop is a bar, tavern, or similar commercial establishment where alcohol beverages are sold. Traditionally, it's a shop where spirits were sold by the Dram, a small unit of liquid. Basically, if you have a bar and you get someone so liquored up and then they go hurt someone, you're liable for that. You can't serve people 24 drinks, man. You're not allowed to do that. So that's why bartenders cut you off. Because they have to. Bartending afforded Harvey, a neither relative nor fellow Oath Keeper, unique perspective of Crow. She said serving drink after drink, she spent hours observing him in the very setting where he would join the paramilitary group that in the wake of January 6th became an object of intense public interest. Said Crow had a good sense of humor, but the more he drank, the more opinionated, obnoxious he became, she said. He was, um... Just very right wing, second amendment, you know, mine is mine, this is our country. He was a Marine, very proud of that. And, you know, just a very strong belief in the right wing kind of principles. He didn't have a whole lot of um, nice things to say about you know, liberal and liberal ideas. He didn't have nice, th nice things to say. Oh, yeah. The Jolly Roger was co-owned by Watkins and her boyfriend, Montana's Sinif. These are the fascists that are going to kill us all, chat. There you go. These are the people that are going to be running the camps. Because liberals won't pass H.R. 1. They, liberals cannot protect the right to vote in this country. They're just incapable. They're just in case. Oh, God. Oh, we got to do bipartisanship. They're rigging elections everywhere and they're planning on stealing elections. But it has to be bipartisan. We can't. We can't protect the right to vote unless it's bipartisan so they can steal it for their own benefit. But we won't stop them because that wouldn't be that would be partisan. They can partisanly steal the elections, but we can't fix it. Oh, can you imagine not doing bipartisanship? Crow and Watkins struck up friendship at the bar. Like Crow, Watkins went into the military after high school. Watkins, who was transgender, served in the army and was deployed to Afghanistan. Watkins, who is transgender. You know, chat, you know what it reminds me? You're not going to believe this is real. The Association of German National Jews. Have you heard of this before? I think we covered it once or twice before on stream in the past couple of years, but... The Association of German National Jews 
was a German Jewish organization during the Weimar Republic in the early years of Nazi Germany that eventually came out in support of Adolf Hitler. The Association of German National Jews was founded in 1921 by Max Neumann, who was its chairman until 1926 and again from 1933 to 35 when the association was dissolved. Hey, chat, do you know why it was dissolved? The Nazis did it. The goal of the association was the total assimilation of Jews into the German Volksmeinschaft, self-eradication of Jewish identity, and the expulsion from Germany of Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe. Newman was especially opposed to Zionists and Eastern European Jews. He considered the former a threat to Jewish integration and carriers of a racist ideology serving British imperial purposes. He saw the latter as racially and spiritually inferior. The association official organ was the monthly Der National Deutsche Jude, edited by Max Newman. The magazine had a circulation of 6,000 in 1927. Among the activities of the association was to fight against the Jewish boycott of German goods. It also issued a manifesto that stated that Jews were being fairly treated. In 1934, the association made the following statement. We have always held the well-being of the German people and the fatherland, to which we feel inextricably linked, above our own well-being. Thus, we greeted the results of January 1933, even though it has brought hardship for us personally. This is real. The seemingly ironic fact that the Jewish Association advocated loyalty to the Nazi program gave a rise to a contemporary joke about Newman and his followers ending their meeting by giving the Nazi salute and shouting, down with us. Despite the extreme patriotism of Newman and his colleagues, the German government did not accept their goal of assimilation. The Association of German National Jews was declared illegal and dissolved in 18 November 1935. Newman was arrested by the Gestapo the same day and imprisoned at the Columbia concentration camp. He went, so if you're transgender, and you're trying to put a right-wing fascist coup to put America in? Are you nuts? I mean, obviously you're nuts, but what? Are you not like, what? Ask Caitlyn Jenner. I know, I know, I know there are, I know, I know, I know there are right-wing transgender people. I'm just saying, like, what? She referred to herself as the commanding officer of the Ohio State Regular Militia, according to court records. Watkins was also a member of the Oath Keepers, a nationwide decentralized anti-government militia that recruits military veterans and pursues a conspiracy theory, asserting that the government is trying to destroy American liberty. The name is an allusion to an oath sworn by police and military personnel to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. During the protests and riots over racial justice in the summer of 2020, Watkins showed up as an oath keeper. According to Harvey, Watkins said she administered aid to people hurt in the protests and guarded businesses from looting in cities like Columbus, Ohio, and Louisville, Kentucky. Shortly after those events, she said Watkins stepped up her oath keeper's recruiting efforts. That's when Crowell signed on. I thought it was the worst idea the day Jessica told me. I was like, you're just out of your mind. You're crazy. He's so volatile, so uncontrollable. Like, you're not going to be able to control him if you take him to D.C. Every Thursday night, Watkins said Crowell on the conference call. Meetings in Watkins apartment above the bar with other Oath Keepers from around the country. Harvey told CNN Watkins and Crowell would show up in their fatigues. She has failed the vibe check. Yeah, she knew. One day when Watkins and Crowell were preparing for the Million MAGA March that occurred in D.C. in mid-November, Harvey noticed them at the bar's patio, sawing pull cues in half and attaching zip ties to the cues. She didn't know exactly what they were doing, but grew concerned. In Harvey's mind, it seemed to mark a shift in Watkins' militia activity away from strictly helping and towards something else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the militia was there to help. The activity made Harvey uncomfortable, and she quit the job shortly after the November event. During those latter months of 2020, Harvey said, something strange happened. Crowell became calmer. He just became actually a little more, a, a, a little less obnoxious as he could get, and a little more um, just intense about a job and focus on it. Back in January, Siddiff seemed to echo this notion when he told CNN that the militia was a good thing to help Crow, like it was a reason to be sober. 
Don, it is striking just how many people are former veterans who are now accused of attacking the U.S. Capitol. They came to Washington trained in warfare, wearing combat gear, forming a line, marching up the Capitol steps, and then use their training against the U.S. Capitol. These three Americans are some of the first to face the most severe charges in the attack on the Capitol, including conspiracy, obstruction of an official proceeding, and violent entry or disorderly conduct. All three are U.S. veterans. 65-year-old Thomas Edward Caldwell served in the Navy. 50-year-old Donovan Ray Crowell is a former Marine. This is Crowell inside the Capitol building on January 6th. Overran the Capitol. We're in the the person who popped up behind him is Jessica Marie Watkins. She served in the Army as Jeremy David Watkins. On January 6th, the former Army veteran riled up her troops in person and on the Yo, social CNN, media site Parler. We stormed the Capitol today. Watkins is a member of the Oath Keepers, an extremist anti-government group. She also started her own self-styled militia in Ohio. We wanted to know more about these Americans now charged with attacking the democratic transfer of power they claim to support. So we went to their towns. Turns out Watkins runs a bar with her partner in the village of Woodstock, Ohio. I spoke with a neighbor who lives down the street from this bar who didn't want to be identified, but he told us that this is the watering hole for this town of about 300 people. And that when you would go in to get your beer, Watkins would often try to recruit you to her militia. He said most people didn't bite, but we know at least one person did because he was in D.C. with Watkins and they were both arrested. That person was Donovan Crowell, who lives just down the street from Watkins Bar. I am her boyfriend. She does is not a violent person. Montana Sniff and Watkins run the bar. The two live upstairs where the FBI showed up last week. The shots woke us up and the yelling, because they were on a microphone yelling, it is the FBI and to come down. And it was crazy. It was flashbangs, not gunshots. The blasted out window remains broken. Only Sanif was home and says he was questioned and released. Watkins later turned herself in. What was her plan? Uh, she was supposed to help um, protect some VIP members within the uh, Trump rally. There are people calling her a traitor. How would you describe her? Is that fair? That is very much an, an unfair statement. She would never uh, try to dismantle the Constitution. So you don't see this as an insurrection or no. sedition? It was illegal. And those people involved did need to uh, take their lumps, but it's including Miss Watkins for, for what if she is found guilty of anything then she will damn what I tell you about right wingers chat they scared they talk big when it's not when the when it's not real but now that it's real they're they're gonna they're gonna back down they're bullies okay right wingers are bullies they only like to punch down anytime there's a fair fight they are gonna they're going to be quiet. Have to take the consequences of that. Sniff also knows Crowell and says he joined Watkins' self-styled militia. What's he like? When drunk, the guy you want to shut up. When sober, the best man you could have. Well, he came to the bar, so you saw him both drunk and sober. It, that's, that's how I got, got that barometer, and the militia was a good thing to help him uh, beat like it was a reason to be sober. Crowell has been convicted in Ohio for drunk driving. His mother told CNN by phone that a couple years ago her son said they were going to take over the government if they tried to take Trump's presidency from him. His mother said she didn't think much of it until January 6th happened. About 400 miles away from Woodstock, Ohio, near Berryville, Virginia, is where Thomas Caldwell lives. Every single in there is a traitor. Every single one! That is Caldwell at the Capitol calling legislators the traitors. Caldwell was a delegate to the Clark County Republican Convention last year. In Washington, D.C., authorities say he was a co-conspirator with Crowell and Watkins in the assault on the Capitol. I do not believe the uh, charges of conspiracy are at all fair. Now, it's unclear how Caldwell knew Crowell and Watkins, but according to federal prosecutors, they were all in Washington, D.C., and Watkins was using the Zello application on her phone to both communicate and plan the attack on the Capitol.
It's our duty as Americans to fight, kill, and die for our rights. Meanwhile, Kraus' correspondence with his mother and sister grew more sporadic and politically toxic. You are fucking brainwashed. Typical leftist bullshit. Just attack instead of listening. Why don't you move to Chicago? You'd fit right in there, dumbass. Jesus Christ! Coming from you, I'll take that as a compliment. You're brainwashed by... <laughs> <laughs> wow, our slur fucking YouTube videos scared of anything different from you. Why don't you go stroke your guns? It'll make you feel safer. <laughs> oh, damn. As 2020 came to a close, Watkins and Crow and another associate, 65 year old Thomas Caldwell of Virginia, traded a flurry of messages laden with foreboding rhetoric of a coming war and a potential for violence. During her recruitment efforts, according to court documents, Watkins responded to a November 17th text for a recruit who had asked for her prediction about what 2021 would bring. Biden may still yet be our president, she said. If he is, our way of life as we know it is over. Our republic would be over. Then it is our duty as Americans to fight, kill, and die for our rights. Later that month, Caldwell texted Watkins that violence may be necessary. I believe we will have a, to get violent to stop this, especially the Antifa maggots who are sure to come out in mass, even if we get the prez for four more years. I mean, that's... Yeah, there it is. Prosecutors allege Crowell traveled to North Carolina for a two-day training camp in mid-December, a charge his attorney denies. In any case, despite Crowell's apparent enthusiasm for the Oath Keepers, it appears he hadn't exactly marked his calendar for January 6th. On December 29th, Crowell seemed caught off guard by a text message from Watkins. You still going to Illinois? We plan on going to D.C. on the 6th, weather permitting. No, what's going on on the 6th? D.C. Trump wants all able-bodied patriots to come. I'm sure Tom would love to see us as well. If Trump activates the Insurrection Act, I'd hate to miss it. So these motherfuckers... See what I mean? Like, they, they were ready to kill you. They were ready to kill you. They were ready to kill me. They were ready to kill anybody who protested Trump's stealing of the election. On the eve of the 6th, Crow hinted at impending violence in a Facebook message saying they were planning to go Tifa hunting in D.C. An apparent reference to Antifa, according to an affidavit. Crow, Watkins, and Codwell met up with half a dozen or so other Oath Keepers from North Carolina and Florida. Bedecked to their fatigues, Crow, Watkins, and other Oath Keepers stood out in the crowd of Trump supporters. Covered in a helmet, sunglasses, and a mask, Crow's face was almost completely concealed at times, ex except for his nose. Amid a mass of people that pushed back at least one law enforcement officer, Crow, Watkins, and a handful of other Oath Keepers breached the Capitol around 2.40 p.m. <laughs> Crow's at, here's Crow. All right, here they are. Crow appears in the Capitol. Oh, oh, oh. nice. Took over the Capitol, overran the Capitol. We're in the fucking Capitol, Crow. You know, chat, this is a pro tip. If you're committing a violent insurrection, perhaps... You don't say the names of everybody in the middle of the insurrection, you know, you don't record yourself. I'm at, like, this is the thing that's amazing about social media. Why do people use it? Like, I get why I use it. I get a lot of engagement. But why the fuck does anyone else use it? It's unclear what, if anything, Crowd did once he breached the Capitol, aside from taking selfies and standing sentry on the steps of the Capitol. About an hour and a half after Crowd's entry into the Capitol, a video shows a few Oath Keepers back outside. A man on a bicycle appears to mock them. Denisa Crowd confirmed to CNN that the voice of the man who has taken the video and who responds to the bicyclists, bicyclists belongs to her brother. You guys know the That's a lot of... Right? 
The real army. I heard they canceled them. Yeah, they're coming. 1100. Decent after the Oh. The real army. The bicyclist says, hey, you guys know the real army's coming, right? Oof. Oof. Over the next few days, Krause celebrated his role in the insurrection in private messages with friends that ranged from boastful to affectionate. Yes, we went in through the east back door, just as they broke through the front door. I'll have to tell you about it. It was epic! Fascism is cringe? When we're all in the camps together, we can all look at each other and go, Look how cringe that concentration camp guard is. He's so cringe. Look at his mustache. He's kid, he barely grow a mustache as they start, they light us up in front of the fucking mass grave and the machine gun nest is like primed and we're all sitting there with our hands bound behind our back. Look how, look how cringe they are. They're such, so cringe. I bet they can't even get laid. As the bullets cuts through our backs, we can all look and go, wow, I can't believe I just got killed by a cringe lord. This is the most cringe thing that's ever happened. I've just got killed by an incel. <clears throat> anyway, I can imagine. Bit all over the news. Hope they got the message. The storm has arrived. Blood really uh, neatly collected in thoughtful buckets below us, yeah. Ralph seemed to show particular deference to Caldwell, his elder by 15 years, who he often called Sir. Thank you, sir. Love the hell out of you, Tom. You too, my dear friend. We stormed the gates of corruption together, although on opposite sides of the building. So between that and our first meeting and getting to know you since, I could say we will always be brothers. On January 11th, Crowell and Watkins trade messages on Facebook in which Watkins, under the nom de guerre Jolly Roger, prosecutors say, floated the, an idea to head to the mountains of Kentucky to live with a band of Oath Keepers. In exchange, she alluded to guerrilla tactics employed by the North Vietnamese Army and the Vietnam War. What's really sad is right-wingers don't even know about their own death squads. Like, because the thing is, they can't learn about all the right-wing death squads and guerrilla uh, operations supported by the CIA because then the idea that we are the good guys might, you know, that might fall away from their eyes. So the only guerrillas they know about are the leftist guerrillas that beat us. Gives, gives us the high ground. Makes the tunnel and out of fighting positions great above the water line. Be like the NVA in network tunnels. We should probably discuss all this in person. I'll be up after I get paid tomorrow. In mid-January, Crow spoke with New Yorker journalist Ronan Farrow. Crow told Farrow that he had post-traumatic stress disorder and that Oath Keepers had come to D.C. to protect VIPs, although he wouldn't say who. Crow also admitted he was drinking during the interview. It seemed to threaten the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalists. I already know where you live, he told Farrow. Farrow also spoke to Crow's mother and sister, Denisa. Shortly after the article published, Crow sent Denisa a string of menacing Facebook messages. Sup, you pathetic piece of shit. Stay away, maggot. I'm allergic to lies and bullshit. I have your number, R... Re R, R slur. Don't push me. I got you, bitch, betrayer. Ty was on my side. Be seeing you, lying whore. Watch your back. If you ain't laying on it, maggot. What the fuck? This is his own sister. This is his own sister. This is sick. On January 17th, FBI agents arrived in Ohio, but Crow and Watkins were hundreds of miles away. Pulling their heels at Caldwell's house in Berryville, Virginia, they raided Watkins' home, recovering what appears to be a recipe for making explosive. Zinev, her boyfriend, told CNN it's not true, saying Watkins hates explosives. Oh, well. Gosh, at least the, boy the boyfriend says she hates explosives, ch or the uh, chat. That same day, FBI agents raided a location where Crow was known to say agents recovered a reinforced vest embossed with his Oath Keeper nickname, Tra Trapper. But Crow was gone. Crow and Watkins learned that the FBI was sniffing around and later that same day, January 17th, made the eight-hour drive back to Ohio to turn themselves in. Crow, along with Watkins and Caldwell, is charged with a conspiracy, obstructing an official election proceeding, destruction of government property, and unlawful entry on restricted building or grounds. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison for the obstruction charge alone. Prowl's defense lawyer, Carmen Hernandez, 
This is that's how brothers killed brothers during the U.S. Civil War dehumanization. Oh yeah, absolutely. Why would you turn yourself in if you consider the state illegitimate? Because they the force that was going to be dropped on their heads. They they know they can't actually stand up to the state. Like they're not going to actually. They don't want to die. This is all fucking bravado. Disputes most of her charges against her client. When arguing successfully against Crow's pre-trial detention, Hernandez noted that even the Justice Department has acknowledged that the door to the Capitol had been smashed open by the time Crow streamed into the building with other Oath Keepers. Hernandez says Crow came to D.C. not to obstruct congressional proceedings as alleged, but to help provide security detail to Roger Stone, a political confidant of Trump. Mr. Crow. Okay, I don't need to read their fucking defense attorney. It's boring. At a hearing in March, U.S. District Court Judge Amit... P. Meta noted Crow's military service, his lack of previous criminal convictions, and a moving letter submitted by his son. He got stopped for DUI! What do you mean? Oh, he was white, so he got put in ADR, so he doesn't have a record, even though he has a criminal... See, if you're black and you get caught for marijuana, no ADR for you, you are got a criminal record. But you're white and you're a drunk driver... You've got no record, so when you get arrested for insurrection, we can let you go. A moving letter submitted by his son. Crow, the judge says, presents a complex picture not unlike a lot of people these days. I can't tell if this is a right-wing judge or a lib. Of course it's a lib. I should have known when the word complex picture came out that it was going to be a lib. Every time. Well, he only tried to, you know, overturn democracy. The judge also noted Crow's struggles with alcohol and setting the conditions of his bond, which forbade drinking, possessing weapons, and associating with any Oath Keepers. Still, Denisa Crow was worried about her brother. She said that while she and Crow had a long history of talking trash, the banter had always been at least somewhat playful. His Facebook message calling her a maggot after the Pharaoh interview in mid-January signaled a shift. Now, normally I would tell him to go fuck himself, and but I thought this time is different. I mean, this is... This is huge. I mean, I said, what are you doing? What is the end game here, Donovan? I love you. I, I don't want you to get hurt or you to hurt someone else. Crow said he loved her too. But then Denisa said, he added, stay tuned. And she said, stay tuned for what? Crow responded by blocking her. Holy shit, dude. We do politics here every morning starting at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Eastern. 7 a.m. Pacific, you can watch us here on Twitch. We're the morning guy, the morning politics guy, politics frogs in every single day, same time, 10 a.m., day in, day out, and we carry you through your morning and early afternoon politics needs. And if you need more, Mike from PA, we have a YouTube channel. We talked about suburbs, the My Pillow guy, Ted Cruz, talked about DSA amazing making fun of Tim Pool amazing look at all of these amazing videos get in there watch them we have me on Twitter you got to follow me on Twitter chat I'm at 20,614 subs that means I got like 40 followers on Twitter in the last day you can do better than that you can do better than that go follow us on Twitter and of course Join the Discord, where we have an incredible community of left-wing streamers. We have left-wing community, we talk about the stream, we talk about politics, there's gaming content. It's a really awesome, supportive place, direct action, mutual aid, and you can just let off some steam. And also, you can help produce the show. One of the things I do is I look at the links that are put into the news content suggestions chat room on the Discord. Join the Discord, come hang out, and uh, maybe what you want me to talk about will be part of the next show.